Now, you've never been fired, have you? Uh, I was, maybe still am, one of the worst actors around, or most ill-suited. I met with Aaron Spelling, and I said, uh, part of the deal is I want to direct. And he says, well... What's the best movie role you ever turned down? Hmm. And as she walked around me, she touched my head and said, who f***ed up your hair? <laughs> Hey folks, Carlos Watson with a very special show. When you think about Hollywood icons, James Brolin's on that list. You know him, handsome guy, actor, director, producer, and of course, Barbara Streisand's husband. The Carlos Watson Show is brought to you by American Family Insurance. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, well, well, I'm gonna bring Carlos on right now. Oh, uh, the boss is here. I get boss the feeling. Boss is here, exactly. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, everybody cool it. <laughs> you, you've seen that scramble happen before, huh? Well, if you like working here, guys. <laughs> Wait, now, now you've never been fired, have you? Uh. James Brolin is a two-time Golden Globe and Emmy Award-winning actor, producer, and director. Starring in iconic movies like Skyjacked, You're a fool, Larry. Westworld, What do you want? Capricorn One, Amityville Horror, Mother of God, I'm coming apart! And countless TV shows. Not only has his career spanned over six decades, earning him a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, he's married to none other than the Barbara Streisand and is the proud father of fellow actor Josh Brolin. And why were you so good? What was your secret sauce? I think I thought about it from the time I was 15, you know? And, and I would ask people questions all the time about how do you prepare for this? And, and I spent a lot of time because I was really, maybe still am, one of the worst actors around or most ill-suited. So I spent 10,000 hours in workshop classes saying, if I don't learn to do this stuff, I'm out of here, you know. And so, and I thought the only way I'm going to be in a studio to direct is be an actor. And so I worked hard on it and had a bit of luck. How did you get into directing? Because I, I, for some reason, I always think of you as an actor. No, as a matter of fact, I started, uh, my grandmother gave me a little brownie camera when I was eight or nine years old. And by 10, I had my own dark room and I was building cameras out of tape and cardboard. You know, that was back in the days when all that was unique and everybody was showing you how to do it. And, you know, I don't think kids today have an opportunity like that as much. Uh, but anyway, by the time I was 15, uh, I was I had been to the movies so many times and just went, whoa, is that, how do I get involved in that? And as a matter of fact, at 15, I got a tour through a studio and my dad was a contractor and there was guys painting and sawing and a guy up on the crane saying all right move that bring the horses in here and uh, you know this and that i think this is like a construction zone i understand that my dad does this except they're shooting it on on a camera and i bought my first bell and Hal wind up straight eight camera and started shooting films saying i want to make movies i met with aaron spelling and I said, uh, part of the deal is I want to direct. And he says, well, he said, you know, why don't we see how we are right here next a year from now? And if we've gotten through a year and you really know the guys and what we're doing, then I'll give you your first one. He called me one year later. He said, your year's up. Uh, he said, there's three scripts sitting there. Pick the one you like because that'll be easier if uh, you get a script that you kind of feel good about and understand. The show ended out so good because I was overprepared and I got five shows immediately. And, you know, and, and then it just wow. escalated from there. And that was in the early 80s, you know. What's the best movie role you ever turned down? Hmm. You know, was it smart when they came to me and literally begged me to do Superman? And I said, I can't see myself in a red sock hanging up on wire. Somebody calls lunch and they got a, everybody's gone to lunch and they're up there trying to unhook the wires, you know? I said, I just think that's a career killer. And after the first two days, I would just bore me, you know? And Christopher Reeves ended up being Superman, you know? I just, uh, 
said, absolutely not. And I'm still glad of it. I think I made the right decision. You know? Superman's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good one. What's the smartest decision uh, you've ever made? A friend of mine's has this lady that I know from parties who asked him, would Jim Brolin be interested in dating me? And he calls me and I said, oh, no way. You know, well, I hope she doesn't see this. But uh, anyway, the answer was no. And then she called a couple of days later and said, would he be interested in meeting Barbara? Barbara, Barbara. oh, that Barbara. Oh, the one in the park in New York. Yeah, the one that sings. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. So Barbara and I are both on our way to a prearranged party. And I pick up the phone. I'm on my way and I'm going, okay, I'm going to cancel this. This is this, this ain't what I do, you know, as a blind date. And she was cutting a film at, that she had directed and was on her way in the car and picked up the phone to cancel also. And we both went, ah, oh, what the hell? So we ended up <laughs> there at the party. I saw her come up the stairs and out onto the veranda. And as she walked around me, she touched my head and said, who f***ed up your hair? <laughs> and I had to shave because I'd always been bearded. I fell in love. That was like the fairy godmother went ding when she touched my hair, you know? That was 20... Four years ago, and we're still, we're just solid as a rock. So that's the best decision I ever made was going, screw it, I'll go to the party. You know, <laughs> that was the decision moment. What's the best advice you could, you've either gotten or you could give about love? The best advice I could give about love is don't give up on them. Don't give up on them. Just there's a reason you were there in the first place. You gotta tell me this for, um, I saw an amazing L.A. Law. Remember L.A. Law back in the day? Remember that TV show, L.A. Law? Yeah. You remember Corbin Birdson? In that, there was a great scene once where he talked about being the handsome guy and mm -hmm. what only handsome guys experience and most other people don't. Yeah. Take us behind the curtain, because I feel like you were the ultimate handsome guy uh, on TV. I say that and five bucks get you a Starbuck. <laughs> I think um, I confuse that with the fact that when I got Welby and we got our fame really quick, that everybody trusted this young doctor. And see, that that's the way I would answer that, that I was trusted. I don't know if it's because of a face or whatever, but uh, I never found my, other than my mother being over, oh, you're so cute, you know, I said, mom, you know, you wonder why I don't drop by more often? Please stop that Be fearless, we can do it! I believe in you, we can do it faster! In our home is the training ground for her dreams policy. Ensure carefully, dream fearlessly. Who is the best actor you've ever worked with or seen? Using whatever definition of best you want to use. Who is the best? The best? I, I saw Brando all over the place, but he basically, when he decided he was going to do his job, he was the best ever. And I was uh, actually signed at 19 years old, before I even was at Fox, um, to play his son in the prologue and epilogue of Mutiny on the Bounty. The movie started with the prologue of the son telling the story of what happened to dad on the island. Anyway, in the end, it was cut out. I was there almost a year. Uh, I was in, out, in, out. I had a greatest time in Tahiti in the late 60s. Oh my gosh. Times of 10. Now it's drugs and rock and roll just like everywhere else. But then it was the, the fantasy of island girls like you never saw before. So, so for you you just did you just turn 80 or did i make that up no you didn't make it up i don't understand what happened but somebody told me that <laughs> uh i just checked my license and that's what it says but i uh, a bunch of liars <laughs> yeah i'm 80. Now, now now tell me the truth how different does 80 feel from 70 or 60 or 50. 
Well, I think the um, for most guys, 50 to 60 is the best time of your life. It's just the greatest. You have your strength, you have your wisdom, you have respect. Uh, chances are career is going fairly smooth during that period. 60s were cool, 70s were cool, uh, about 74. I, I got that Life in Pieces, the series that uh, I did for CBS yeah. recently. I like you, Colleen. You're so much more pleasant than Matt's first wife. Yeah. And I had a ball, but I knew the game wasn't quite the same anymore. And really, uh, that's when that started, that's when I started grooming some of these scripts that other people had written, but were not shootable. And I'm not a real good... Uh, original storyteller, but when I see one I think is going to make a good movie, I think I'm a good judge of it. And I also uh, have a talent for making it work to where the when the money reads it, they go, we, we want to invest in this movie, you know. What would you have done if you hadn't made it in TV in the movies? What do you think you would have done? Uh, I went to Donna Karen with a line of men's uh, soaps, one that looked like a piece of log that you'd throw in the fireplace, but it was a big soap with crusty, you know, and a shampoo called Hair <laughs> That was before Schitt's Creek stole my name. Right. My, right. my spelling. <laughs> <laughs> Hair <laughs> <laughs> When people ask you about dreaming fearlessly, what advice do you give them? Because you know a lot of people they have big dreams. We all have big dreams, but it's hard to grab a hold of it and make it actually happen. And even if it does, to hold on to it, maintain it. What kind of advice do you give people about dreaming fearlessly? My mother would say, "Honey, you you can you can be anything you want to think of yourself as." You know, the words "I want" I heard a long time ago. "I want" is a big thing. When you tell somebody, you know what I want. And you get through, either you're re repetitive or you really get through to them with your attitude that that's what you want. People just flock to try and make that happen for you. And if you don't prepare yourself for that, well, that's going to become apparent to them real quickly and you're going to fall apart the minute you get a chance to do what you're asking for. Hey, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, 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 All right. Jimmy, uh, I, okay. I, I, man, I, I, enjoy, I enjoyed this. What a treat. Now, when things get healthy again, uh, yeah. you got to come see me. I got to come see you. What I love is that you have the air of someone who's enjoying his life and has enjoyed his life. And that's a beautiful thing. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I, and I do and am. I wish we were out uh, testing the world right now, but uh, we're not, you know, but at least okay, this is so great. We can talk now. These new tools are fabulous, huh? This has been a lot of fun. Can't wait till next time. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with James Brolin. Reminds me a little bit of another veteran actor, Glenn Turman, who was one of my favorite conversations as well. Both of them have had beautiful rides. I love that for James Brolin, he's been able to pass it on to his son, that Josh has had some of that same success. It was interesting to hear him talk about some of the things that maybe he passed on or that didn't quite work out, but he did it all with the wry smile. I kind of enjoyed that as well. And who knew that he had interior design sense? Uh, lots of layers to him. Really appreciated him stopping by and hope that he'll come by again. Um, if you're enjoying the show, remember that you can get more of this. The podcast is the extended version. So longer conversations, go get some. And you can also subscribe, so we'll tell you whenever a good new episode is out. Hope to see you soon. Tell your friends about the show. Appreciate you stopping by. Hey, tune into The Carlos Watson Show. It's like no other. You're going to enjoy it every weekday on YouTube.